Hello and welcome. Welcome to Success in Dentistry mini-series, Minutes with the Coach, Episode 2. In our last episode, we began exploring the important concept of what makes a high-performing team. Specifically, we explored how different results actually show up around a group of people who are truly playing together a team game. The overall premise or conclusion that we came to is that at the end of the day, the best way to grow your business is by growing the people within your business. So in alignment with this, today we will be exploring something very specific, something that when practiced on a, on a daily basis or on a regular basis, not on a daily basis, something that when practiced regularly and when exercised well can have a dramatic impact on your ability to run your business and on the effectiveness and alignment of your team. And that is planning mastery or specifically running powerful, results-producing, effective team meetings. Now, did you know that there's only a small number of dental practices that actually have regular team meetings? And most of them that do, if you interview the leaders or the team behind closed doors, they'll tell you that they're not that productive. They'll tell you things like, um, nothing really changes after we have a meeting, and sometimes they'll even tell you that they become finger-pointing sessions or gripe sessions. And I've even heard people tell me, and I've seen people actually storm out of team meetings angry at each other or upset about what's being discussed or what's not being discussed. And they basically sometimes become non-productive. So this is what I really want to look at today. And I really think I want to start with actually asking us a very important question. And that is, why do we run team meetings in the first place? What's the purpose of the meeting? I mean, do we just run them so that we can solve our problems? Or is there a bigger picture that these meetings actually achieve when they're run effectively? I think there are three reasons or three things that meetings achieve beyond actually helping you to solve your immediate problems. And that is, first, they increase each individual team member's ownership and commitment to the growth of your business. The second thing is that they unleash the creative powers and collective wisdom of your people or your entire group. And the third thing, and most importantly, is that they enhance the overall chemistry and unity of your people. The harmony and morale of your group is enhanced when you take time out of your business to engage collectively as people and to work on your business. So there are three questions that I think that we should draw from today and, and things that we should actually move into exploring. The first one is, why don't people have team meetings? Why do they run them so infrequently? The second one is, why are they not productive? Why is it that most team meetings are not very effective at implementing or at effecting change? And the third one is, how can we actually create a better full team meeting so that we feel proud of them, so that we feel that they're worthwhile, and so that we desire to actually have them more, more often? So let's begin by looking at the causes of infrequency. First and foremost, let's look at how often people have team meetings in the average dental practice? The average dental office, if they have meetings at all, tends to have one short meeting a month. And usually, most people aren't present at that meeting. And I wonder to myself, why? Why is that? I mean, wouldn't we want to have them more often? Let's look at a story that's really an analogy or parable of team meetings themselves. If you took two people two lumberjacks and place them side by side in a forest and you engage them in a race. Each lumberjack has to chop down their own individual tree before the next lumberjacks. So you blew a starting gun, you set on your marks, get set, go. And both lumberjacks ran up to their tree and both of them began chopping. Now, if they chop continuously, these trees are so big that it would take each of them approximately 12 hours of continuous chopping in order to get the tree down. The first lumberjack, he approaches his tree by swinging frantically. He swings as hard as he can, as fast as he can, and for as long as he can. He gets tired, but he keeps going. He keeps going, and no matter what, he's relentlessly pursuing his goal. 
which is chopping down the tree, and he just keeps going and going and going. The second lumberjack, when the starting gun goes and the starter says, go, and your mark is set, go, the second lumberjack runs up to the tree, but instead of picking up the axe, he stops, he looks at the tree, he walks around, he gets his bearing, he decides exactly where he's going to put the placement of cuts strategically. He then starts chopping at the tree. He stops periodically to walk around and to examine his progress. He stops periodically to take out a sharpening stone and to resharpen his axe, and then he keeps going. Now, at the end of a couple of days of chopping, which lumberjack do you think will have chopped down their tree first? The one who frantically attacks a tree with, with no end in sight, or the one who takes his time to rest, to plan strategically, to focus their efforts, to stop and to take their time to really engage themselves in productive work rather than chaotic, frantic work? Well, isn't this similar to a dental practice? Let's think about it for a moment. I think that the main reason that dental practices don't run team meetings often is, one, because they don't feel they're very effective, but the bigger reason, I think, is that they, don't, that they feel that they're actually losing productivity time. They feel like they're taking money out of their schedule by taking time out of their schedule to work on their business, to plan and to execute things. Now, imagine if this is how the sporting world thought. The average sports team right now plays an average of or plays one game to every four practices that they have. The same concept exists in theater. Um, the average theater actor, theatrical actor, will actually rehearse for 12 hours for every one hour they actually spend on stage performing. And in the words of the great Abraham Lincoln, he said, if I had two hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend one hour sharpening my axe. And my question to you for your dental business is, how sharp is your axe, number one? And the second thing is, how hard are you swinging your axe to achieve your goals? Or more specifically, how aligned is your team in your collective activities? And how hard do you work to actually achieve your results? The more productive, sorry, the more you engage in taking time out of your business to work on your business, the more effective your business will be, the more your stress will be reduced, and the more aligned you will be in, co in your collective activities with the rest of your team. So have team meetings more frequently. The next thing I want us to look at is what is the cause of this low effectiveness? Why is it that most team meetings don't achieve much of a result? And why is it that most people will say nothing really changes much after our team meetings? So what I've done over the years is I've come to I've I've drawn together from my past experiences about ten very specific things that are the cause of why meeting dental meetings aren't effective. So let's go through these. The first one is disturbances. Disturbances during team meeting in the form of remaining open or answering phones, or serving customers. Any time we're engaged in creativity with the people around us, if somebody walks into the room to disturb us, even for 15 seconds, it takes you about five minutes to bring your group back to the level of consciousness you were, you were at before that disturbance. Number two is that there's no clear pre-planned purpose or agenda. Before we start a meeting, we must understand exactly what it is that we want to solve by the end of that day, and that must be our agenda, and we must not allow anything to actually disturb that or knock us off course. Number three is that I find, in general, and this is simple to understand, there's not enough time scheduled for us to be able to adequately plan and execute and implement change. Number four is look around the room when you're having a team meeting. Look at what's in people's hands. Do they have a pen and paper? Are they making notes? Because when we engage pen to paper, it engages more of our central nervous system. 
we become more committed to our actions. We become more creative when we make notes. We're able to make connections between ideas and concepts that would, we, we would never be able to make if we were just doing them without a pen and paper. Number five, I find, and this one's a sin, I find that the whole team is often not present during team meetings. Yet we're discussing things that are required to be implemented by the entire team. So if everyone isn't present when we plan something, we don't get their input, we don't get their ideas, and we don't get their commitment to execution. So what you'll find is half the team is committed to implementing something, then the next day the other half that wasn't there show up and they become the hole in the bottom of the glass that eventually allows all the water to drain out of. Number six, and this is a biggie, and it's drifting off topic with no facilitator to keep us aligned and on track. What often ends up happening is team meetings kind of begin and we begin discussing a topic. And then someone else jumps in and brings something else up. So we kind of end up chasing that topic. And then someone else jumps in and brings something else up and we end up chasing that. But we never really adequately take one idea or discussion to completion because we've got so many people kind of throwing different rabbits into the, into the mix. And really an example of this is you're sitting, in a, you're sitting in a meeting and the dental hygienist says, today I would like to discuss the concept of waiting too long for doctor's exams. We need to do something to get the doctor into the dental hygienist treatment room more quickly for the hygiene exam. So she says this to the room. The doctor then, and she says, let's discuss this. The doctor then jumps in and says, well, it's my dental assistant. If she was more organized and had my treatment room ready, then I'd be able to come in for the exams. Then the dental assistant jumps in and she says, yeah, if the front desk pulled all my charts in the morning, then I'd be able to stay on time and I'd be able to be more organized. Then the front desk says, are you kidding? We're understaffed up here. We're going crazy. We need to discuss that. And suddenly you've got four different agendas that within seconds have been pulled or thrown onto a table and we've lost sight of the initial issue that was, init that was in initially brought up. So it is very important to stay on target and to keep ourselves focused on one thing at a time during team meetings. Number seven, the lack of creative involvement and participation. We must not allow any individuals that are, in, that are involved in our meetings to fly below the radar. It doesn't matter if they're quiet or shy. Everyone's opinion matters and everyone must be must be expected on a very consistent basis to contribute their ideas and creativities to, <clears throat> to the group. The old saying goes that none of us is as smart as all of us and each of us can contribute to the, connect, to the collective wisdom of our entire group. Number eight is negativism. Negativism just simply means that sometimes people show up to a meeting but they're not focused really on solving the issue at hand. <clears throat> Their bigger focus is they want to use the meeting as a way to vent or as a way to show how important their job or their role is in the office or as a way or they'll get defensive or they'll get territorial and it becomes a very kind of defensive or offensive finger pointing, bickering and backbiting session. So it's very important to keep meetings positive and to keep meetings focused on creating and achieving harmony and helping each other to help each other rather than pointing out who's not doing what. And the second last one, number nine, is there needs to be at the end of any meeting a clear set of walk away strategies. As a result of what, will, what was discussed today, we must know exactly what we intend to do differently. What has changed as a result of our discussion together does everyone understand what has changed and are we committed to those actions? And number 10, the last one, and the most missed one, is that there's no follow-up point. There needs to be a clear follow-up point at which we can 
evaluate, enhance, and tweak our commitments to progress. So the next thing, so that is the causes of low effectiveness in a team meeting. The next thing I'd like us to look at is how can we then create a better full team meeting? What can we do to improve the quality of the results we get with each other in our room working together with a common focus? The first thing we can do is I think that we need to have an agenda board. An agenda board is more or less a whiteboard something that we can place somewhere in a common area within our practice, something that everyone can see. And as you're walking around the office during any given workday, you'll get ideas sometimes about something that you'd like to change, something that you'd like to improve or implement. And then you write it on that agenda board. Somebody else writes something on the agenda board. Somebody else notices something and they put it on the agenda board. Then, before any team meeting, the leaders in the business take the agenda board and they pick two or three items that we're going to discuss and then we bring those to the team meeting. This way, the agenda board becomes a representation of everyone's ideas, everyone's desires, everyone's challenges and hardships, and we're able to actually bring these into a room and actually solve them and improve them. The next thing is that we need to have facilitators. What a facilitator is, and the facilitator doesn't necessarily have to be the manager or the owner of a practice. The facilitator is somebody who's a good communicator, somebody that's able to help the team start on time, that's able to present the agenda, that's able to keep the group on track and focused, somebody that's able to make notes and list the minutes of the meetings. Number three. We need to avoid having something that I like to call bad meeting stew. Bad meeting stew is where we throw every type of issue that needs to be discussed into the same pot. And almost like a bad stew that's got too many random ingredients in it, we kind of lose our focus. It's almost like the best example I could give you is think of a divorce settlement meeting where a husband and wife are in the process of getting a divorce. And while they're discussing the important matter of custody and access with the children, one of the partners brings up um, something like who's going to get the family Tupperware or the family silverware set. I mean, these are two completely different um, levels of focus or topics, and they shouldn't be mixed into the same conversation. By the same token, we do this in dentistry. We mix the biggest, most important forward-thinking topics with the littlest issues and we put them in the, same pot, in the same pot and we discuss them during the same meetings. Different meetings require different levels of focus and different levels of consciousness. For instance, we must have daily check-in meetings. Daily check-in meetings are simply something where we share the daily schedule and we coordinate our immediate activities. But these should be different and require a different level of consciousness from the weekly tactical meeting. The weekly tactical meeting would be something more like reviewing our weekly activities, our tactical obstacles, and really looking at the kind of immediate issues at hand. And then the third one is the monthly strategic meeting. The monthly strategic meeting is more of a step back look, take a breath, Think more meaningfully about the big picture and the direction of your organization. Three different meetings, three different levels of consciousness. None of the topics discussed in those meetings should ever be thrown into one pot. Number four, every team meeting needs to have a structured and organized process that keeps them flowing in a good direction. The, way, the best way to do this is to use something that I like to call a strategy implementation tracker. A strategy implementation tracker is merely a form. The form can be blank and you can create it yourself. On top of the form you would list your desires for today. For example, in today's team meeting you might want to reduce anything. You might want to reduce no-shows in your practice. So. You would write on the top of the, of the strategy tracker, you would write reducing no-shows within our practice. But 
my advice to you is instead of writing what you want to achieve in the negative, write it in the positive. So instead of writing reducing no-shows, we would write something more specific or more positive, like creating a smooth, productive, and filled schedule where all patients show up for their committed reservations. So we list that on top. Underneath that, we must list all the obstacles that stand in our way of achieving our goals. What stands in our way exactly of making sure that all patients show up for their committed reservations? So we start listing the obstacles. And the obstacles may be things like the patient's schedule, or the patient's commitment, or our ability to create value for the treatment they're to receive there during that reservation, or our response to abuse, how we handle them or manage them when they decide to not show up for, a, for an appointment. So first, we list our desires. Second, we list all the obstacles that stand in the way of achieving our desires. And what we do with those obstacles is those obstacles are actually the tools or the raw materials that we need to use to transform our obstacles into strategies. So obstacles are raw materials that we use to transform what stands in our way into strategies that we can use to effectively implement our goals. And finally, once we've got all our strategies listed, then we need to organize those strategies by listing who will implement exactly what, by when, we need to have a clear deadline, and how will we know or monitor progress. So, Strategy Tracker consists of list your desires. Underneath that, list the obstacles that stand in your way of achieving your goals. And then underneath that, list who exactly will do what, by when, and how will we know. And there you have it running effective, powerful, results-producing team meetings. I think one other thing that we need to do in order to make our meetings effective is we need to understand that it's very important to have an attitude of trust in the meeting. People must feel comfortable to share their ideas, to share their views. They must, be feel, they must feel safe to expose themselves and their weaknesses. Also, team members must feel... must must be given permission to engage in passionate and unfiltered debate of ideas. Once that debate is finished, then we must dedicate ourselves to making unconditional commitments. And unconditional commitments simply are that once we finish debating, we must decide on what we're going to do, and we must be committed to what we're going to do, regardless of whether you agreed with it or not in the first place. You must release your prior views, and commit to group decisions without silently nursing your commitment to, their old, to the old way. And the way I like to actually put this is that we must be able to actually divorce the past, divorce our emotional connection to the past, and marry any agreements that have been made during team meetings. And finally, the last thing or the last concept that I think is really important is that we must be able to creatively innovate and reinvent ourselves on a daily basis. This means that we live in a changing world. Each practice must keep up with the dramatic and, fast page, and the fast-paced changes that are occurring in the world around us. In today's rapidly changing world, the modern and innovative practice can very quickly become outdated and obsolete. There are so many things around us in the world of dentistry that are changing by the month, by the day, by in fact the week. Things like our patients, they're different. The scope of the available services that we provide. Dentistry's image as a whole. Dental insurance is changing. <coughs> Excuse me. Technology is changing. And the, and the entire concept of selling itself is re-evolving itself in the eyes of society. And what we must do within our practice is we must continuously re-examine our activities especially the, one that's, the ones that seem to be working. And we must ask ourselves questions like, can we find new and innovative ways to achieve our goals each day? Can we align our collective activities to better meet the changing landscape of business and clinical dentistry? I mean, we've all heard the saying, 
or that uh, definition of insanity, which is doing the same thing, yet, yet expecting or hoping for a different result. I recently was walking through a chapter's bookstore, and I saw a really interesting book. It was titled, If It Ain't Broke, Don't Try to Fix It. But actually, this book wasn't titled, If It Ain't Broke, Don't Try to Fix It. It was titled, If It Ain't, Bro if it Ain't Broke, Break It. And the underlying premise behind this book was that the very habits or successes that get us to where we are in any point in our lives, these habits and successes eventually become the shackles that imprison us and keep us from growing in the future. And to all of you, my advice is free yourselves from the grips of mediocrity and stagnation by having well thought out, well structured, productive full team meetings. Recreate yourselves on a daily basis. Develop the habit of normalizing the new and develop the habit of leaving the familiar behind. So there you have it, running powerful results producing team meetings. To learn more, please feel free to email me or call me on the number listed below. And on behalf of myself, Peter Berry, and on behalf of the Halton Peel Dental Association, we look forward to seeing you next month. In our next episode, we will discuss the important concept of time. We will look at time, how it impacts us, how it impacts our patients, and how we use it in our practice for maximal productivity and to minimize our stress. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you next time.